What's up everybody, I'm Jason, and welcome back to some more tips and tricks for the Canon EOS R5C. So this is episode 7, we're talking about some basic stuff this time, and we're talking about frame rates. Now, a couple things before I get into this video. First of all, this is targeted at people like me. So if you're an experienced Canon cinema shooter, you're probably not going to get much out of this. There isn't any kind of crazy detailed testing or anything like that going on in these videos that might illuminate something you didn't already know. However, I came to Canon cinema cameras from Canon's hybrid cameras and, you know, getting up to speed on the cameras when I got mine, my R5C new was a little bit of a steep learning curve. And of course, if you're considering a Canon cinema camera, so if you're already shooting with Canon mirrorless cameras or Canon DSLRs or whatever, and you're considering a cinema camera, you know, this could be useful for you to see how the cinema camera does things differently. It's a little bit more telling than just say reading the manual. Uh, finally, Speaking of cinema cameras, if you are considering upgrading to a Canon cinema camera, I know the target focus of this video is the R5C, but Canon has done a very good job of maintaining consistency in the settings across the Cinema EOS platform. And so especially like with frame rates, a lot of what I'm going to talk about here also applies to cameras like the C70, the C300 Mark III, and the C500 Mark II. They will all have very similar settings and an almost identical way to go about doing things. So as I said, in this video, we're talking about frame rates, and we're actually probably going to talk a little bit more about things that affect the frame rates than you can choose than just talking about how to choose and change or how to change frame rate on the camera. So we're going to talk about the system frequency. We're going to talk about recording modes. We're going to talk about what frame rate options those recording modes have. And of course, we're going to talk about how to change all of that throughout the entire process. So we're going to start with system frequency. And system frequency is really, you can consider it to be the, the grandfather ruling parent entity for when it comes to frame rates on the camera. Now, if you're coming to the R5C from the R5 or any of the other hybrid cameras, you would know this setting as the video system on those cameras. However, it's a bit different. So there's a couple of major differences with the system frequency on the R5C versus the video system, system setting on the R5. The first one is that changing the system frequency on the R5C and other cinema cameras requires the camera to restart. In fact, when you change the setting, the camera will automatically reboot into that setting. So it's not anywhere near as simple as just flipping a setting in the menus and then you're already running in that setting. Uh, second of all, where on the R5 and other hybrids, the system or the video system controls the frame rate that is output when you're, say, in the menus. The R5C handles the menus completely differently. Uh, they're overlays on top of an active video stream. And quite honestly, the HDMI output for the R5C is quite a bit more complex in how it works than on the R5, which I'll probably end up having to talk about in its own video because there is HDMI raw and all of that kind of stuff. And maybe it'll be worth comparing and contrasting those two options on the R5 versus the R5C. Now, the final thing that's majorly different about the system frequency from the video system setting is the settings that you can choose from. So on the R5C, you have three settings, where on the R5, you only have two, NTSC and PAL. On the R5 III, your settings are 59.94 hertz. So this gives you access to all of the NTSC frame rates. So 23.98 frames per second, 29.97, and 59.94. You have 50 hertz, so this gives you access to the PAL frame rates, so 25 and 50 frames per second. And then you have a setting for 24 hertz, and this is the true 24 frame per second mode on the R5C. However, it only has one frame rate that you can select from when this is enabled, and that is 24 frames per second. So this is again different from the R5. On the R5, you can choose 24, the true 24 frame per second mode, whether the camera is set to NTSC or PAL for the video system. All you have to do is be in one of the DCI recording or, or resolutions. So either 8KD or 4KD, and the camera will give you the option to shoot at 24p. On the R5C, you actually have to reboot the camera into 24 hertz, hertz mode to be able to shoot at the true 24 frame per second option. So changing the system frequency, there's only one way to go about doing it on the R5C. That is through the menus in the recording media setup one menu page, you will find a system frequency entry there with the three frequency options that I just talked about. That's where you go to change it. 
So with the system frequency out of the way, let's talk about the recording modes. So the R5C supports six different recording modes for shooting video. These are normal pre-recording, frame recording, interval recording, continuous recording, and of course slow and fast, fast motion. Now on, on Canon, in the manual, they group these as you have normal and then you have the specialty modes, which are pre-frame, uh, pre-recording frame, interval, continuous, and slow and fast motion. However, as far as shutter speed options are concerned, I consider the grouping a little bit differently. Basically, I consider pre-recording frame uh, and continuous recording to be kind of normal modes because they generally use the same or support the same free frame rates and settings as normal does. And then slow and fast motion and interval as a kind of separate thing that supports additional frame rate choices because of how things work. And I'll talk about slow and fast motion in this. I only really ever used normal and slow and fast motion, so the pre-recording frame and interval recording options I'm not super, uh, super familiar with. I will eventually talk about them in a future video, but for this video we're focusing strictly on normal and slow and fast motion, knowing of course that, as I said, the other four pretty much follow what you have available in normal. So changing the recording up mode on the camera, there's like three and a half ways to go about doing this. First of all, you can of course go through the menus. You will find the recording mode on the recording media setup to menu page. You can use direct touch control, which is the direct touch interface on the touch LCD on the back of the camera. So to do this, you would tap the direct touch control virtual button in the bottom left corner of the screen. Then the record settings virtual button in the top left corner of the screen. And then on the record settings one menu page, so the first page, you would have the recording mode that you can select there. The final option, of course, is to use buttons programmed to do your thing. So, of course, you can use a generic button through the menu user setting button function and just have it point to the recording media setup two pages recording mode entry. That's one way to do it. Uh, the other way, if you're just interested in slow and fast motion, and this is how I have a button on my camera set up, just toggling into and out of slow and fast motion, there is an optimized button action for the camera that just toggles slow and fast motion on and off. So you could program a button to do that, push the button, you jump into slow and fast motion mode, push it again, and you jump back to whatever recording mode you were previously working in. So in the recording modes, as I said, there's kind of two options, the normal modes and the slow and fast motion mode. So for normal mode, what we're talking about is when the camera is recording and playing back at a the same frame rate, essentially. And there will only be one frame rate option that you can set. It's essentially the playback frame rate, and it will be uh, one of the standard video frame rates. So it'll somewhere fall somewhere between 23.97 and 60 frames per second, depending on the system setting that you have selected. Most of the frame rates are going to be accessible from pretty much every setting on the camera. The only real caveat that you run into is 60 frame per second 8K recording. So when you are trying to record at 60 frames per second with 8K or at 8K resolution, the camera has to be set to record in the raw LT codec. And if you want, the camera will function at that point just fine. But if you want the full functionality available to the camera, specifically the addition of autofocus and power through the multifunction shoe for an external microphone or a multifunction shoe recorder, you will also need to provide the camera external power either via the USB-C port or a the, can, the newest Canon dummy battery and external power supply that provides the power of the camera, the full capabilities of the power that the camera needs. So setting your normal record frame rate, this is also going to be the playback frame rate that's used in slow and fast motion. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. Three ways to go about doing it. So you can, of course, go through the menus. It's on the recording media setup page one under frame rate. You can use direct touch control. It will be direct touch control, record settings. It will be on the second page for your primary recording. There will also potentially be, if you're doing continuous recording or otherwise using a sub recording, the third page, which controls the frame rates and stuff, the settings for that file or your secondary recording, there's also sometimes available options for frame rate on that page as well, depending on the camera configuration. 
Final option, of course, you can program a button action using the generic menu user setting option to take you to that frame rate menu entry on the record media setup one menu. So the other recording mode that the camera really gets into doing a lot of stuff with frame rates on the R5C is, of course, slow and fast motion. So slow and fast motion on the R5C introduces the concept of recording frame rates and playback frame rates. What Canon has chosen to do, and I don't know if this is a cinema thing or if this is a professional production thing or whatnot, is basically doing the speed adjustments in camera. So with slow and fast motion, you can select a recording frame rate from 1 to 120 frames per second. There are some caveats based on resolution, like you can't shoot 8K at 120 frames a second. And there are some limitations as to what frame rates that you can actually select based on the code, the codec, the system frequency, and the frame rate that you are using for playback. It's all a little, I won't say complicated, it's just there's a lot of details. If you're interested in the specifics of what frame rates correspond to what settings are available for what settings, see page 113 and 114 in the electronic manual for the video capabilities of the R5C. Also be aware that the frame rates are not infinitely adjustable or they're not adjustable on a one frame basis. There's like skips and jumps in how many frames per second you can select. And that's where those tables come in because they don't always, not all of the record frame rates are possible for all of the playback frame rates. The other side of the equation is your playback frame rate. So these are your standard video frame rates, you know, 24, 30, 60, whatever frames per second, depending on the camera system frequency setting. And this is where the R5C is markedly different from the R5. So first of all, the R5C can do the opposite of slow motion. It can do fast motion. Uh, I want to say it's under cranking or over cranking. I can never remember which one the old cinema term is. Uh, but basically, like you could shoot video at 20 frames a second, play it back at 24 frames a second, and make you look like you're moving a lot faster or you're a martial arts genius or something like that. The R5C, besides that, gives you the option in camera to change how the the, the target or the output frame rate is. So this is something the R5 can't do. First of all, it can't do the, uh, the lower than 120, well, actually, in high frame rate shooting, the R5 can only shoot 120 frames per second. And it only will ever set the, the output files to either 30 frames per second if you're set to NTSC mode or 25 frames per second if you're set to PAL mode. On the R5C, you have a lot more flexibility here to make those adjustments in camera so you don't have to adjust them in post. The additional thing that the R5C can do in slow and fast motion is record audio. So where the R5, when you are doing high frame rate shooting, records no audio, the R5C can actually record audio in slow and fast motion. Now, there's a caveat to this. You have to have an SD card in slot two, and you have to manually enable audio recording in slow and fast motion mode. Uh, it cannot record it or does not add it to the video file itself, and it does not record it on the same or cannot record it on the same card. So even if you're using a very fast CF Express card in the primary slot, it cannot record video and audio to that simultaneously. You have to have the two cards. So to set the slow and fast motion, the input frame rate or the record frame rate, three, well, three and a half options or four options, however you want to think about it here. So remember the playback frame rate is going to be set the same way we just talked about for the normal mode or the normal frame rate options. The slow and fast motion frame rate is set separately. And so you can set this through the menus. Uh, it's going to be the recording media setup number two or menu page two under slow and fast frame rate. The option will be not available to be grayed out if slow and fast motion recording is not enabled. So you will have to enable slow and fast motion recording before you can set the slow and fast motion frame rate. You can, of course, do it through direct touch control. Again, tap the direct touch control button button, tap the record settings button. On the first page of your record settings menu, you will have a slow and fast motion frame rate entry or button there. 
if slow and fast motion is enabled. If it's not, it won't be there and you'll have to change modes again. Finally, you have two options to deal with it, uh, do with buttons. So as always, you have the generic button that's customized via the menu user set and bu setting button function where you tap set that to the slow and fast frame rate setting in the recording and media setup menu page two. Don't do that. If you do this a lot, there is a dedicated direct action button option in the button settings to set the slow and fast frame motion frame rate directly. So this is what I have on my camera. So I have one button set up to toggle slow and fast motion, and I have one button set up to change the slow and fast motion frame rate directly. So with this set, you would hit the slow and fast motion frame rate button that you've configured, and then you would just turn a dial on the back of the camera to the frame rate that you want and push set button, the set button to commit it, save it, and that will be your new slow and fast motion frame rate. This is by far, if you're doing a lot of work with slow and fast motion, especially if you need to do stuff at various frame rates for whatever reason, this is by far the fastest way to go about making adjustments into slow and fast motion compared to going through the menus, even direct touch control or anything like that. So, this is the frame rate options on the R5C. If you found this useful or at least interesting, let me know by hitting that thumbs up button. If this kind of thing is your kind of thing, please consider subscribing if you're not already. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.